So in that point number two, we had mentioned that when Fn is greater than Fc, the phase difference between primary and secondary voltage will be less than 90 degree. So you can now see that V12 is still, still my reference voltage. And when I say secondary voltage, I'll consider voltage across the first half of the secondary. And you can now see the phase difference that we have is going to be less than 90 degree. This is definitely less than 90 degree. All right. And minus half VAB uh, will always be opposite to half VAB because they are 180 degree out of phase. And for this reason, when half VAB and V12 are uh, having the phase difference, which is less than 90 degree, minus half VAB and V12 will have the phase difference, which will be obviously greater than 90 degree. But we are going to do the same thing. We will add the voltages on the primary side and the secondary side once again. So if I add the voltages, then this will be my resultant this time. And this will be the resultant between the other two phasers. Uh, I will again use the same names. Uh, this is nothing but VAO and this is uh, nothing but VBO. So in the second case, when Fn is greater than Fc, you can easily make out that VAO will be greater than VBO in its magnitude. Right. Please remember that half VAB is the voltage across first half of the secondary and minus half VAB is the voltage across second half of the secondary. And if I'm adding those voltages with the primary voltage V12, then I can generate voltages in the first half of the secondary and the second half of the secondary which are different in magnitudes. And third case will be obviously for Fn less than Fc. When Fn is less than Fc, you can see the phase difference between primary voltage V12 and secondary reference voltage, which is half VAB, will be obviously greater than 90 degree. This will be minus half uh, VAB because it has to be exactly opposite to half VAB. If we now draw the resultant, then you will see that this time it is very obvious that mod VAO, which is the magnitude of the first phaser, is less than mod VBO, which is magnitude of the second phaser. So uh, what is the conclusion? The conclusion is simple that if Fn is equal to Fc and if I take the difference between VAB and VBO, difference between their magnitudes, then the difference will be equal to zero. When input frequency is greater than carrier frequency, and if I take the difference between VA, VAO and VBO, then this difference will be greater than zero. And as you can see, as Fn, that means the input frequency will keep on increasing beyond Fc, this phase angle will keep on decreasing. And as the phase angle keeps on decreasing, VAO will keep on increasing beyond VBO. And this difference will also keep on increasing. And now if you can correlate, this is exactly what we want. If the input frequency increases, I want the amplitude also to increase so that I can convert from FM to PM. In the third phaser, you can see if I take the difference between, this should be VAO. If I take the difference between VAO and VBO, then this difference will now come out to be less than zero. That means if Fn is less than Fc, uh, then the amplitude is going to be negative. So if you now look at this final conclusion and this difference between VAO and VBO values, it's VAO and VBO everywhere, then uh, this difference is simply corresponding to the change in the amplitude as per the change in the input frequency. And this is how we achieve the conversion from FM to PM. So this is the important principle uh, based on which the foster silly discriminator is going to work. So somehow we have to make sure that both primary and secondary are tuned to carrier frequency FC. And then we have to somehow add the voltages of primary and secondary. Now, how is that done? Uh, all you have to do is you have to somehow get the voltage of the primary on the secondary side so that it can be added with the secondary voltage. Now, this is an extra connection that we will have to make.